Hello guys, uh, today I'll be reviewing the EPZ Q5. Uh, so EPZ has been in the audio game for a long time, uh, but it's recently that uh, they have started making IM uh, and other products under their own name. So this was in 2019. Uh, before they were purely an ODM and OEM brand making parts or IEMs for other brands, uh, but they make their own IEMs now. Uh, so the Q5 is sort of a new IEM from them. Before I start the review, I would like to say a huge thanks to EPZ for sending me these review units. Uh, but uh, all the thoughts and opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's start the review. So before I talk about the sound, let's talk about the build quality, comfort and accessories. So the packaging for its price of $50 or even less when during the sale is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it comes with an IEM which looks like the Meze Adva. Uh, it has an MM6 cable which is very supple and very nice. Uh, three pairs of small board tips and three pairs of whiteboard tips, a fantastic carrying case uh, and also a cleaning cloth. Uh, I do not mind the MM6 connector uh, but a two pin might have been better over here. Uh, also the build quality for its price of $50 or around that is really good. Uh, the carrying case is also really good. It has a perfect size when you, uh, as you can use it daily and pocket it daily. Uh, I have a black color over here uh, and they're very comfortable to wear. Uh, I can easily wear them 5 to 6 hours for easy without any issues. They have a quite a bit of driver flex and also they are quite easy to drive. Uh, they have a 10 mm ceramic carbon nano uh, dynamic driver. Uh, so let's talk about the sound signature. Uh, I would say that the overall sound signature is V uh, with a leaning towards the bright. Uh, I have used a narrow bow tips as that gives me the tad bit more bass although it does narrow the sound stage a bit. Uh, it has a great tonality and timbre and uh, for my testing I have used the Hebe FC6, Fio BTR5, iFi HipDAC3, the iFi Go Blue, the Colorfly CDA M1P, the Colorfly CDA M2, Muse Hi-Fi M4, Fossey Audio N3, Ion Yuki, Hebe M300, the Acclaim PD4 Plus, the Kinera USB-C dongle DAC, the Razer USB-C dongle DAC and my smartphone for testing. Uh, so let's talk about the base. Uh, the overall base is very light. Although the quality of it is quite decent for the price, uh, the base is more sub bass focused, more than mid bass focused. Uh, there is no mid bass bleed. Hence the instruments from my test tracks, like from the 1985 live album Cassiopeia, uh, sounds really clean and well controlled for its price. Uh, so where it does fall is when listening to songs like Crack Crack Crackle by, by Classy. Uh, while the bass has a great quality, it lacks that overall uh, punch and thumb I would uh, need to enjoy that song. Uh, when using the X bass mode on iFi hip deck, it sounds really good and doesn't distort. So I think so the bass does have potential in that region. So let's talk about the mids. The mids overall is quite okay and takes a back seat. Uh, the male vocals from uh, Chris Cornell, Bill Withers, etc doesn't have that uh, richness and thickness i would generally like although lighter sounding male vocals like the ones from flumpool spits etc sounds quite good uh, with this keeping in mind the female vocals also uh, is a place where it, this shines at and it plays very well over here uh, although again uh, this could get uh, quite a bit spicy when listening to it at higher volumes or uh, if you are uh, sensitive to it uh, but at lower volumes it does sound very good and clean with the right song. Uh, treble. The overall treble is kind uh, kind of surprising as to how good it is. Uh, it is very it has a very clean representation over here. It is very airy. Uh, so if you are a treble head, you will like this set very much. Uh, again, uh, this treble could get a bit sibilant for some, especially at, hi at higher volume. So I wouldn't suggest this to those people who are uh, generally sensitive to that uh, treble. Uh, technicalities. Uh, for this price range, I, I could say it is the best out there, around the $50 range. It reminds me a bit of the Geek World ZK20. So when listening to the live album of Cassiopeia from 1985, the instrument separation was really good, really clean. So yeah, it reminds me of the Geek World ZK20. Talking about the sound stage, the sound stage is also surprisingly good over here. I was quite shocked as to how good these were for the $50 price point uh, as it has some equal amounts of depth and width, uh, giving it a very well-rounded sound stage for this price. Generally, you will have a, a, a greater width and uh, or a greater depth, but this has a very well-rounded sound stage for its price. So imaging, uh, this too is very good. Again, the left and right transition when watching any movies was really great. Uh, listening to Yomeji by Nanorip, uh, there is this uh, 
uh, guitar playing on the bottom left uh, which sounds really good really clean and really precise on the epz q5 uh, and it the imaging is really awesome uh, so the gaming test now with the great sound stage and imaging you would expect a great gaming experience uh, and yes it does that uh, but also no why because as i talked about that harsh really upper means and the really treble uh, so in a busy situation in a game uh, it does get a bit uh, too much to handle uh, when there are too many gunshots when there are too many things happening especially if you are at a bit higher volume while it has a uh, great sound stage and great imaging uh, that really upper mids and really treble could get a bit much and uh, it could be a bit spicy over there when playing a game and if there is a lot happening inside the game although these are okay for occasional gaming so but i wouldn't suggest them buying just for gaming uh, so let's talk about the comparison and recommendation so versus the ew200 uh, they are very both uh, very similar uh, but i feel at this price point the ew200 makes a better case uh, with the bass having a better texture in my opinion than the q5 although the q5 has better female vocals and more treble extensions up top uh, those who find the ew200 to be too thin or sparkly the q5 takes it a few notches above in my opinion so versus the uh, BGVP P05, uh, the P05 is sort of like an exact opposite of this and it is a great warm sounding IM with much greater bass. Versus the E20, the E20 follows the Harman target quite closely. Uh, the E20 has a larger sound stage, but the Q5 has a better imaging. Uh, when wearing them, the E20 is much more lighter uh, while the Q5 is much more smaller. It depends up to you. Uh, and overall, I prefer the presentation of E20 a bit better. Although the packaging, overall packaging of the Q5 for under 50 is much better than the Aoshida E20. So yeah, uh, well, overall, I do think that the EPC Q5 is a very clean sounding IM for its price point. Uh, if you want a very uh, clean sounding IM and you listen to a lot of live uh, J-pop performance, I think so the EPC Q5 makes a great choice. But if you listen to any genre where bass is needed and you want the tactility and punchiness and the thumpiness of the bass from the sub bass and the mid bass region, uh, I think so you should look at something else uh, like uh, the BGVP P05 or the SimGod EW200. Uh, yeah, I think so they make a better case and uh, I think so they perform quite well. Although if you have something like the i5 hip deck, you can use the X-Base mode and these sound really good. So it does have the potential if it has a tad bit more bass. So it depends as to what kind of genre you like and what kind of songs you listen to. So that was my review of the EPZ Q5. I hope you liked it. Uh, thanks for stopping for my review and watching it. Uh, I really appreciate it and uh, a like and subscribe from you means a lot and 94 percent of the people watching this video is aren't subscribed so it would really mean a lot if you could subscribe to my channel so yeah uh, that was my review and i hope you have a great day bye